us how, how you're reading the situation. I mean, we've been talking on this programme quite a lot with Will about how volume uh, has not been convincing and about how, the, you know, the, the market trading activity has been difficult to interpret. Tell us how you're reading these signals. Well, look, this is peak monetary policy uncertainty. The Fed can't erase the inflation of the past year. It is setting monetary policy that's going to impact the economy in the coming year or longer. Uh, and it's left it entirely open-ended. Quantitative tightening every month at the maximum pace, short of directly selling bonds into the market. Uh, rate hikes, if the market demands uh, ever more radical action, just as it did during the collapse of 2020, it wanted a rescue uh, every week before it could get the opportunity. This is the sort of thing that is uh, impacting markets. Uh, we've had a dramatic rise uh, in uh, debt costs of capital. We think that the real opportunity here is now to lend again at much higher interest rates. Uh, and for our equity portfolios, for the time being, we're going to focus on the most reliable source of returns, which is dividend payments. Uh, one of your unstoppable trends in your report is the rise of Asia. So uh, in the current situation with, with respect to China, um, if it comes back out of the blocks from, from the long COVID lockdown and it plays into the global economy in a bigger way, uh, how does that pick, factor into the, 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 the short term and, and the longer term picture as far as you're concerned? Well, I'm glad you asked. I mean, this is a really interesting contrast right now. The American economy and its financial markets are having this trouble because the level of employment and the level of profits is very high and strong and likely to come down. China's economy after a year past, 2021, um, of deliberate policy tightening through a whole variety of means, some of them very regulatory, um, has a weak economy right now. And that's exacerbated much, much more because of COVID restrictions. COVID has not determined the long-term outlook or even the performance of economies for even annual periods. So it looks very much like the early 2020 period for China, where simply getting past COVID will mean some rebound in economic activity. And then we're looking at a policy environment that is trying to restore economic growth, where the economy is, is quite depressed. Um, the property market has had sales declines of 50% already. So if you fear something is going to go down, it's a lot harder to say that with China after it's already actually had a hard landing a 40% drop in share prices to now good valuations. So I think objectively for global investors, uh, we have a very different cycle now that is asynchronous between China and the United States. Uh, and uh, while we would be emphasizing safer returns and safer assets in the U.S. market, uh, we're taking some risk in China equities now.